And Barbara, the weekend is just around the corner. Hopefully, you guys are all geared up to do lots of fun things at home. At home, because we've survived about, I think, a week yep. of um, phase two starting and, and groups ha gathering. It's been quite nice, I must admit, to, to be able to see uh, people outside of the household and outside of work. I do love you mm -hmm. uh, a lot, but it's also nice to see other faces as well. Thanks. You're I'm welcome. going to try and not get too offended by that. No, okay. oh, there's so much love for you. I see but, you all the time. <laughs> but there's a lot of love going around as well. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about the things that have been going right in Singapore, and a lot of them that just sort of people just realizing that we can actually do good and spread a little bit more love around. Exactly. I mean, it hasn't been an easy time over the last few months. So what a lot of uh, companies have started doing it with the capacity to is help others along. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be speaking to two companies today who have kind of taken a different approach. Yep. Um, not so much the mainstream. Um, in order to help others and just to build up communities and stuff like that. So we are going to be talking to our first guest, the Managing Director of GOVT. Yep. Um, they're a creative company. So Alvina, please join us on set. Come and join us. I will move over to the... scoot over on that way. Um, and let's just start by saying hello. hello. How are Hi. you? Good to be here. How so, G I, I just need to know, <laughs> GOVT, do you guys get confused okay, all the time? Over just a people? little bit more, yeah. yeah. One that? meter, we're good. Okay, <laughs> okay so GOVT, do you guys get confused? And when people search for you guys, like, do you get a lot of confusion going on? Uh, we do, we do. We get associated to the government a lot. Mm -hmm. Everyone wonders whether we are part of the government. Yeah. Uh, we are not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but what we believe is as an agency, like a good government, we would like to be able to do right by our clients, mm -hmm. do right by the creative work, do right by our people. So that's why we picked GOVT and the founders thought that it's um, something that is in the DNA of the company. Wow. And is, does GOVT, does it stand for anything? Um, is it an acronym or is it just, is it just GOVT? Uh, it is just GOVT. Okay. okay. And I think it's supposed to be like kind of like a fun thing to go like, oh, if we type in GOVT.SG, will people think that we're a government and exactly what you guys are doing? Right now, um, it feels like uh, people get a little bit confused. Well, we're a little bit cheeky. We're a creative company after all. Yeah. yeah it's, all, it's all for the yeah. fun of things anyway. I mean, obviously, you guys have a very good ethos that you guys have founded the company. You want to do right by people, by your clients. And I think that's a lovely thing to do, a lovely message um, that you want to try and portray. Um, and given that things have been very difficult on a lot of industries over the past couple of months, uh, between layoffs, downsizing, businesses who are closing down indefinitely, how are you guys doing as an agency? Um, I think we're doing all right. Um, it is undeniably difficult, not just for us, but mm. also for everyone else within the industry. And there is a slowdown in terms of all the work and everyone's been a little bit pensive. But we've been lucky because um, despite not being a large creative company, we've had good support from our clients. We've got good support from the people feeling still quite riled up to, to do the work. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're trying to cope and see, despite all the creative work and despite the workload on the site, what else can we do? And that's kind of how we decided that other than the work we do, how can we give back? And, and that's obviously where Adoptizing SG came about. There's, there's, you've got your own little Instagram page for it. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about this, this movement that you guys have started. Sure. So we love our puns, right? GOVT, and then we decided to do adoptizing. And adoptizing is kind of like, how do we adopt small businesses in Singapore and teach them in the ways that we know how to or help them in the ways that we know how to. So to be honest, I mean, in the, in the beginning, during the circuit breaker, there's been all sorts of initiatives. In Singapore being Singapore, there's a good kampong spirit. Yeah. Everyone wants to help hawkers, small businesses, home businesses, etc. And we thought if we wanted to help, it needed to be authentic. And when we saw how a lot of small businesses were affected, it hit us quite badly. Because mm -hmm. seven years ago, we were a small company with literally two of our founders. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we thought, okay, so what if we could help them in the ways that we know best? How, what about, we, what if we could kind of like help them with the products and help market the products for them and adopt 20 companies for 2020 and put their products out there so that people can be exposed to their products and engage with all these different brands and small companies. And how did you guys, uh, I would say, choose the 20 companies that you guys have now? It's so cute, I like the mama hen. Yeah. <laughs> so Let's how did you choose you. your flock? Yeah. Uh, when we started, we said 20 for 2020. Mm. Um, and within 24 hours, we did have more than 20. Oh, wow. We had about 50 people writing to us. Wow. So uh, we were very conscious that it needed to be companies that needed help with marketing, mm. needed help with a little bit of advice, um, and, and where we can, and it's areas that we can help. Like if there are areas that we can't help, we don't want to take on. Yeah, no yeah. point over committing to something that you can't help with, right? Exactly, exactly. And so we also said we needed, we wanted to be able to help across a, a big range of different types of people. So we have um, an, a tattoo artist. We've got a like a 40 year old spectacle shop oh, wow. Oh, wow yeah like a physical trainer was the first one mm -hmm. last week we helped a balloon company and a local singapore um, game card designer so wow. it's a whole range of people that That's we wanted to very, help. very <laughs> diverse mix of it people is. that you're trying to help out with. So I, I think it's very interesting that you're choosing to give back in this way. I think it's very interesting that you guys have also broadened your base. It's not just one type of client that mm. you're that you're going to be helping with, like whether it's just hawkers or just this type of small yeah. business, but that you're really trying to diversify and help as many people as you can in as many industries as possible as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be exploring a little bit more after the break with other companies that are giving back, one that Barbara's quite familiar with. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's the gym that I work at. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uppercut <laughs> Gummy joining us. We've got Isaac, who's going to be sharing a little bit more about what they've done to give back in their industry as well. So don't go anywhere. This is Kickback with Kelly and and Barbara, we will be back after this short break. Welcome back to Kick Back with Kelly and Barbara. Kelly's popped off for just a little bit this Friday, getting a head start on her TGIF. Um, but I have our second guest joining us, uh, the co-founder of Uppercut Boxing, Isaac. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, nice to see you again, Barbara. It's nice to see you again, too. <laughs> so uh, Isaac's technically actually also uh, my boss at the gym. Uh, but Putting that aside, obviously, things haven't been very easy on a lot of industries uh, the last few months, but on gyms, especially because it was like a hard and fast shutdown um, mm. when the circuit breaker happened. And we have spoken to quite a few business owners, gym owners during the circuit breaker. Um, before we get into it, how have you been? Are you okay? Yeah, I, uh, I'm okay. Um, I think a lot of the fitness industry has been hit. Um, yep. Maybe not as much as the travel industry, but yeah, uh, I think um, government is trying to do as much as it can for small businesses here in Singapore. 
um, people have been supportive to understand that uh, we are going through a tough time. Mm. Um, I think we, you know, um, staying together and, you know, just like reminding each other that hopefully this will end and um, that's, that's always what we're looking forward to in the moment. And, and like Alvina mentioned earlier, there's been a lot of, I mean, everyone's had to do a pretty quick pivot when it's come to, you know, the way that we know and understand how our industries function at the moment. Mm. Um, but Uppercut did take a slightly different approach when it came to mm. uh, holding virtual classes online mm. instead of, you know, selling new packages just for people to attend virtual classes. Um, we ended up going classes are pay as you wish, mm. um, which okay, I, I can understand for a lot of people means they don't pay at all. Mm. Um, but it meant that our numbers were very high. We mm. were getting anything from you know 75 to 100 people per session, mm. uh, which was very different for me from the teaching standpoint. Right. Um, we're used to about 20-ish people. Yeah. But what was the, you know, why did you guys make yeah. that decision? Um, well, we did start off with um, um, class packs. So mm -hmm. we, I think we had uh, $15 for one, and then if you buy three, it's $30. So it ends up being $10 for one. Mm -hmm. um, and we did start that, and I think that was just for us um, a little bit of an idea to save the business. You know, mm -hmm. how do we still generate income in a, st in a time like that? Um, after a while, we realized, hey, you know, uh, the internet is flooded with uh, online content at the moment. Um, from you know Chloe Ting to Emmy Wong to um, yeah one to name a few right literally that, you throw a stone yeah. you hit a fitness workout online exactly yeah. um, and it's good and it was great that they were getting people to move um, but then we were realizing that we it's very difficult to compete with free especially as Singaporeans um, so what we decided to do is like look we'll run free classes and we'll put um, an option to tip. Um, instructor or to tip the class, right? So ranging from $10. So you might do two or three classes with us and decide to pay $10. And at the end of the day, um, if we got people to, uh, to get through this COVID time, because it's not just the virus, it's the staying at home, um, that boredom, you know, and having to fight with, you know, uh, the fights that you have to in your mind. And seeing people online and exercising and, um, so, you know, sending their good energy and good vibes through a screen, um, mm -hmm. albeit through a screen. Uh, if we could help someone or you know, do something in that light, I think that was what we hoped um, to achieve during this time. So, yeah. we, I mean, I guess, especially from your point of view, it's almost like a brand new marketing strategy that you've taken on. Yeah. Sure. You know, you're, you're building up the community, but at the same time, we just use this as a chance to get the word out there. You know, more people get to try it out and, and see whether they like boxing. Because mm. I think it's, it does get quite difficult for a boxing studio because at the end of the day, even I found it difficult to train mm. because at the end of the day, I want to hit a bag. You want to hit something. <laughs> Right, I want to. I want to hit something. I mean, not someone. Yeah. Um, but you know, and if I can't get that in a physical session, then I'm like, then what's the point in me doing yeah. it? Um, yeah. So just getting the word out there. Alvina, I did want to ask for for GOVT. I mean, you guys obviously still have your current clients, but then you've adopted all these new businesses as well. How was what was the balance like when it comes to them managing the workload of existing clients and your your new kids? Yes. Um, it was very clear for us that our clients would always come first mm -hmm. and with any initiative, it's always something that you do on the side, right? Um, it's something that you do on the side because you get to have a little bit of fun with the new kids um, and even for anyone who wanted to try, say, live shows or live talk shows mm. on the platform, um, it also gave a platform for, for, for our staff to try different things. Kind of experiment yes, with exactly. things. exactly. Yeah, so one of, one of the first episodes was to help a physical trainer. If and can I know. Tips, you tips. Should, you should, you should come on board. <laughs> can we apply <laughs> to be yeah. one of your kids? Yeah, yeah and we had um, one of our staff who is quite, she's got a bit of a personality and she likes doing live shows, so it became a platform for her as well. Okay. Um, and it became a platform for us to learn new things yeah. and also help the mm. adoptees mm. per se. So yes, um, it was also kind of like a good balance platform to do good while we balance the work that we do for our clients. And I'm quite curious, so I mean for not just Uppercut but like the fitness industry going forward for, for you, um, where do you see things? So things have changed 
mm. gastronomically, right, at this right. point. Um, where do you see the future going? Is, do you think there's going to be much of a change or do you think we're going to revert back to the way things were? Mm. I think, well, going to the gym has always been primarily a physical thing. You go with friends, you go with someone, you need that kind of motivation. It's a very big community feel yeah, type thing. It, it is. Um, and I think it has, it will change. Um, with all the digital online things, that, uh, content that have been produced, mm. um, I think what will change more is the regulations of who you can go with, how long you can go with. And after a while, like you said, right, like, is it really worth going? Because I think now gyms are set at like an hour cap. Mm. You go in, a shower is what, maybe a warm up is maybe 10 minutes, right? And by the time you get through the whole workout, it's very rushed. Um, and some people don't like that, right? They like to take their time, they like to um, I'm one of enjoy those people. it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it will change. Um, and I think people has, have also learned that I can do a lot of the things that I've been doing at these gyms at home, right? Mm -hmm. Which saves time, um, saves me the, the, for a lot of... Um, uh, for people, it saves me the hassle of getting ready. Mm. Um, you know, I'm there, I'm changed, I go shower and I'm out. You know, I think that, that time um, will uh, inherently make it a lot more difficult to kind of go back to this oh I have to travel all the way to the gym bring a gym bag you know that you know weighs twice as much as my work bag yeah, yeah. but then it, it also begs you to consider the whole notion of again the community mm. which is what we've mm. right from when Uppercut opened tried to build to begin with mm. um, I am a person who absolutely hates working out at home mm. I have no discipline if you try and get me to do a hit workout even if it's seven minutes I am I will find a way to cheat um, so going to a class, having that level of competitiveness yeah. uh, was what kind of spurred me it on. It drives you me. a little bit, It, right? it yeah. drove me a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would be where I am today without that. Mm. Mm. When we relate that to marketing and creative agencies, um, I, I'm very curious to see or to understand a bit more about the different strategies or the different experiments that you guys have conducted with the different industries. Mm. Yeah. Um, so how's that been with, you know, letting your employees kind of almost have this free reign of experimentation. Right. What, are, what kind of other stuff have you guys been trying out? So um, I think it's safe to say that this whole COVID situation has forced a lot of companies to pivot. Mm. Um, without a doubt, even from a marketing perspective or even from a consumer lifestyle perspective. Mm. And I think there are some inherent habits that don't change, but yet you, you will develop new habits of shopping, of working out, of buying things, and of forming communities. So with that, um, it has changed how we do marketing in terms of how we need to, more so than ever, be very wary of what the consumer wants, at what time, at mm. when, when, and where, mm -hmm. and in the right channels. So I think the whole ideation or the whole creative thought speaking to these different people don't change. But it's the different channels and how you reach out to them that will change. And it has changed a lot for us. Yes. And it has forced um, a lot of us to think of it in very granular terms as to how do we get there mm. to get the message across to the different people. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So, I mean, even as uh, someone who is technically a freelancer, I mean, my whole life has been about like marketing myself mm. um, and, and networking and stuff like that. And even for us, that's that's changed drastically. Um, just while we wrap things up, what kind of advice do you guys have? Um, not just to business owners, I mean, maybe for yourself, advice to business owners and to yourself, um, advice to companies who are going forward and thinking of exploring what kind of marketing they should be doing? Whoa. Uh, <laughs> um, He's like, wow, stress. Uh, I mean, I guess um, for business owners, it's really um, see what ways you can pivot. Uh, I think it will be very difficult. Um, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, even with the digital content um, as a gym, um, trying to go and like, oh, how do I start looking at production? What kind of cameras do I need? Mm. And mm. how do I do it cheaply, right? Um, it's, I can do it. I guess if you have deeper pockets, yeah, hire a production team, hire somebody. Um, but if you have to do it yourself, how are you going to do it? How do you get online content out? Um, mm. What are the resources that are available? And there are still online resources that you can use. And it's about um, learning, all right? Skillshare is one of them that I, I try to be on and uh, see how to video edit and stuff like that. Um, and it's just constantly learning and thinking of new ideas to uh, grow the business. Awesome, Alvina. 
Yeah, I think um, companies or brands or, or, or personal brands need to be changing mm. all, the, all the time um, because I don't think there is like a set method for, for anything. Mm. And like you said, you know, the agility of having to learn and relearn mm. and fail sometimes yeah. and then move on to what mm. works um, will be a process that we'll be forced to kind of reconsider. Kind of go with the flow. A lot of us who have like want that control on a lot of things have now been forced to, okay, I guess I have to go with the times <laughs> and go with the flow. Well, thank you so much for all of that insight. It was a pleasure having you on. Isaac, you're going to stay with us okay. and guide us through a little bit of a sweat session oh, nice. uh, after the break. Yes. So we're going to get warmed up for that. Uh, we're going to go for a short break. We will be back to have a little workout. Do join us. We'll see you after the break. here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It's time for us to start working up a sweat. Isaac, staying on to put us through our paces. What exactly are we going to be doing? All right, so uh, we'll just start up with a typical boxer warm-up. Okay. Um, so we're just going to do some neck rotations or neck stretches. Are um, we going to now? The left. We're going now? Okay. We go to the left. Cool. Yeah, we go to the left. We just hold it there hold it. Um, for about three, four, five. Oh, the left, Barbara. Oh, sorry. Out of the left. And then <laughs> switch. Now this side, Barbara. Oh, just there hold this for a bit longer. All right, cool. <laughs> three. Four, it's been a long day. And five, like right, downwards as well. So you add a little bit of um, resistance, just light resistance. You don't want to be pushing down in the back of your head, but yeah. just light one. This is a nice neck stretch. Mm. Resist and up. And then using your fingers, the tip of your chin, just add a little bit of resistance. In three, two, and one. Okay. Now, so we do like arm stuff. We're just going to um, warm up our whole upper body um, in the beginning. So we just want to get that. Um, idea that our shoulders, our elbows, and our wrist, our wrist is like working together. I should know right? this. You like... know this, Laura, right? So just like throwing it out, hand. right? Rolling your shoulders back. Oh, both of them. Are downwards. Up. Yep. And up as well. All right. And then we're doing alternating, right? Oh. So just like like jab cross, oh, just okay. that feeling, right? There I we go. This. Yes, know you know it. Know it's just like simplifying so the movement, really. All right. Nice one. And then the same thing we're going to do with our legs. So again, that idea that our hip, our knee, and our ankles are going to be working together. So right, we don't, we're not just like kicking. This is where it's coordination that, comes in, man. And a little bit of balance as well. We just lost mine. There we go. <laughs> just like kick. Yeah. Just a bit of a motion where we're trying to just loosen up the joints. There we go. Right side. Yeah, got our guys in the studio nice. doing it as well. Yeah. Everyone's Two. joining in today. And last one. There we go. 
Yes. If you need a bit of help, what you can do is just kick and then rest and then bring it back up and then, you know, just kind of slow it down. The idea here is not, we're not trying to exercise anything, we're just trying to loosen up a little bit. Just get it warm. Exactly. All right, Listening. feeling a little bit better. We do yep. a bit of rotation, yes. just side to side rotations. There and we go. everything crack. cracking. <laughs> yeah, nice. Spine goes crack, 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 crack. All right, now we're going to try and reach down for our toes. So like left side, reach toe, right side, reach toe. There we go. Maybe stand a little bit wider. Helps the mat kind of... Yeah, there we go. And done. All right, so a okay. little bit more intense now. Yeah, All right. you're sweating. He's sweating. I am sweating. It's also the lights. There we go. We're going to go into <laughs> a, a squat, uh -huh. then back lunge, back in, then back lunge. Right. Then, oh, okay. So then I was, I was back waiting back. for the demo to There we go. And then front. <laughs> okay. So we're just doing yeah, all oh, sides. Oh, so we're going squat, back, back. Squat, back, back, front, front. Squat, back, back, front, front. Okay. Twice. There That's we go. it. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Three, eh. two, one, go. Squat, squat, left side back. There we go. Oh, the other left. And oh, then. The other left. <laughs> Barbara, we're <laughs> in sync there. And then, so, sorry, front. Oh. And then. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Squat, squat left, left back. back. Left yes, there we go. There we go. And then right back. There we go. And then fr left front. Nice. <laughs> there and we right go. front. Yes, now we look like those K pop bands. There we go. Squat, left back. Left back. Right back. And then front. I've always wanted to be in a K-pop band. And right. <laughs> really? You, there we go. You got the hair, guys. Done. Yeah. Uh, next one is just shoulder taps. So we just go in, hold that plank, and we'll just do nice, slow shoulder taps. No bum wiggles? No. No, no bum wiggles. wiggles. All right. All right. <sighs> All right. Just hold. Let's do this for 20 seconds. Ready? Three, two, one with the tap. So which hand are we going first? Right. K-pop band. Huh? Right, right side. Right. All right, right. And left. Left. Right. Right. And left. Nice. Right. And left. So you're trying to keep that core as tight as possible. Putting your hands closer together helps. Last five seconds. Three seconds. And time. Oh, All right, guys. Nicely done. Well, Isaac, thanks so much for that um, <sighs> workout warm up. Like, I really enjoyed that. It was a fun way to end off the show. It is. It is very good. You take it. I. I always get out of breath by the time we finish the sweat session. Right, so there we go, Isaac. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining you. us and thank being you for having me. a part and bringing us through that sweat session. Remember to join us again Monday. We've got a great episode lined up for you with Daryl David and Dipna Lim Prasad joining us on the show to talk about the next generation of sporting superstars here in Singapore. For this week, though, we're signing off. We'll see you again next week on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara Monday, 8 p.m. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.